Hi everyone, my name is Natalie Sierra and this is my Community Bridges workshop um, titled Queer Coded. It is about the Stonewall Riots in 1969. I'm going to start off with a quote. Um, it's by Marsha P. Johnson, who's a gay liberation activist, an outspoken activist for gay rights, and a prominent figure in the Stonewall Uprising. Marsha said, History isn't something you look back at and say it was inevitable. It happens because people make decisions that are sometimes very impulsive and of the moment, but those moments are cumulative realities. Marsha is often credited with being the first person to throw a brick at Stonewall, which triggered the riots. But Marsha herself refuted those claims. So there's always this back and forth, like who threw that first brick? We'll see. History will only tell. Today, we're going to talk about the historical context of the Stonewall riots um, and how the civil rights movement, the 60s counterculture, and anti-Vietnam movement all served as influences that preceded and drove the fight for gay liberation, which still echoes through our time, especially in our current political climate. So for a little historical context, uh, the civil rights movement, which started in the 1950s, preceded the movement and the fight for gay liberation. When integration happened, this led to a proliferation of communities realizing that they were not, in fact, second or third class citizens, that they were humans above all and all deserving of rights. And so there was a lot of turmoil during the 60s, which sparked 60s counterculture movement, also the anti-Vietnam movement. And they all served as influences for what happened that night when Stonewall riots or Stonewall uprisings happened. There was a Stonewall Inn, which is a club and one of the only clubs that allowed drag queens and dancing in New York, in the Greenwich Village area. And normally they are a club that would be tipped off to police so that they can have time to hide their liquor and things like that because they were still not allowed to serve liquor. They weren't allowed to have clients in the bars that were dressed as the opposite sex. So a drag queen couldn't be dressed as a drag queen. They would have had to be dressed as what their sex was. And they are actually taken into separate rooms and checked by police officers. So the mafia owned um, Stonewall Inn and they actually owned a lot of bars and clubs in the area because they saw it as a way to make easy money because no one else was going to serve the, their gay customers. The area of Christopher Street at the time, and especially Stonewall, it was an area that a lot of homeless, young, gay uh, men and women hung out at. So there was a lot of people that um, had nowhere else to go. And especially like drag queens that were not allowed at other bars and, air and clubs. This was Stonewall was the place that they all converged at. So they were not tipped off and there were many people dragged out into the street and being arrested in front of crowds, crowds started to gather. And one woman, a lesbian woman is hit over the head by a police officer and she actually calls out to everyone and, has, and says to them, you know, help me do something. And that's when someone threw the brick. Brick started being thrown, penny started being thrown and this led to six days of sustained riots. When the riots began, it must have just been wild to see men and women in their full regalia just chucking bricks <laughs> at cops and pennies and bottles and anything that they could do, yelling and screaming and sustaining this for almost an entire week until they were given what they needed, which was their place to be. They won. <laughs> They got what they wanted. They got the freedom to be open about their sexuality in the middle of New York, which now you think of as a really progressive city. But back then, it was a very hard place to be who you wanted to be. Why the Stonewall Movement is important to me and why it's important to us now is that Stonewall simply began the fight, but it is up to us to continue to fight for our rights um, and our place to be. Things have gotten better, absolutely. There, there would have been a time before Stonewall, or there was a time before Stonewall where you could not just simply walk down the street being 
a gay person. But now because of that fight, we are able to walk down the street. But it doesn't mean that there isn't still that fear there. And I think that's something that Audre Lorde hints at and speaks about in her poem, A Litany for Survival. There's still that fear, but without us saying something and without us talking about it, it's going to stay something hidden when it really, it really shouldn't be because there are still people trying to tear down our rights and our movements, especially now with the Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill and a lot of states that are um, jumping on that fight. And we need to fight just as strongly because this is our, these are our lives. These are our friends' lives. These are our families' lives. This is the fight for the future. It doesn't end with just queer people. Um, it's also for women of color and just women too, who are trying to maintain their right to abortions and safe health care, which is also something that goes back to, again, being a queer person. Because during the 80s, when AIDS was running rampant and, and the early 90s, nobody wanted to help them. And a lot of people were dying alone until a few brave people started to speak up. And they realized that this is their family too. And these are people and people need to be helped. It doesn't matter who they are or what they look like, who they love. Nobody should have to suffer alone. We're going to work on a poem or an outline of poems and, and themes on queer love and liberation. And I did want to have a sample of a poem that you can think about and serve as a way to kind of flow into your thoughts on a poem that you want to work on or something that you've been thinking of. And this one is called A Litany for Survival. It's by Audre Lorde. For those of us who live at the shoreline, standing upon the constant edges of decision, crucial and alone, for those of us who cannot indulge the passing of dreams of choice, who love in doorways coming and going, in the hours between dawns, looking inward and outward, at once, before and after, seeking a now that can breed futures like bread in our children's mouths so their dreams will not reflect the death of ours. For those of us who were imprinted with fear, like a faint line in the center of our foreheads, learning to be afraid with our mother's milk. For by this weapon, this illusion of some safety to be found, the heavy-footed hoped to silence us. For all of us, this instant and this triumph, we were never meant to survive. And when the sun rises, we are afraid it might not remain. When the sun sets, we are afraid it might not rise in the morning. When our stomachs are full, we are afraid of indigestion. When our stomachs are empty, we are afraid we may never eat again. When we are loved, we are afraid love will vanish. When we are alone, we are afraid love will never return. And when we speak, we are afraid our words will not be heard nor welcomed. When we are silent, we are still afraid. So it is better to speak, remembering we were never meant to survive. This poem is really powerful to me. Um, and one of the words that really jumps out to me um, is that Audre Lorde continually uses the word we. If you do not know who Audre Lorde is, Audre Lorde is a, was a poet. She was also a lesbian woman and a black woman. and. Just hearing that word we just really drives home the fact that oppression doesn't stop at just one marginalized group. Uh, it intersects with people's sex, people's race, people's religion, and who people choose to love. And um, sorry, <laughs> I was getting a little emotional. <laughs> um, it's really important that we continue to show our pride in who we are and who we love so that they can't continue to tear us down. And that's what I hope the outcome, mostly what I hope the outcome of the workshop is, is that you create a poem that stands up to, to everyone around you who tells you, no, you can't do that. No, you can't be that. I want people to be proud of who they are and I, I want to celebrate that. So for our workshop exercise, we are going to write a poem and one of two poems, you could do a prompt for who threw the brick 
was it Marsha P. Johnson? Can you put yourself in Marsha's shoes? Can you be someone that was there at Stonewall? What would you have done? Or would you like to kind of think about that word, litany, of, uh, sorry, the poem, a litany for survival? Use keywords in this poem here to kind of create your own litany. What are you living for? What are you standing up for? Is it for your love? Is it for your children? Is it what kind of future do you want? All these movements are so important, not just for the time that they happen, but now in the now and the present and in the future too, because this fight doesn't end then and there, it continues on. And the fight is for people like me who struggled their hid their sexuality for a long time. And people like my friends and family or just people that I know or people that I went to school with who had to hide who they were and knowing that they had a secret that they couldn't unburden themselves with and knowing that I had a secret too. Those things really do weigh on you. And I, I, don't, I don't wish that on anyone. And so these fights, it is personal. And I think that putting those thoughts together and putting those words together and just being really able to find yourself in a poem that maybe somebody wrote 20 years ago or that someone is writing now can just really help and really push forward and continue on the, <laughs> the fight, the liberation for everyone, not just queer people, but anyone who is marginalized. I think that that, like I said, harkens back to Audre Lorde's poem, A Litany for Survival. We can really put ourselves in her shoes or the shoes of someone who might have been there at Stonewall. And this would be an excellent time to reflect on those feelings and those emotions and try to put that together into a poem or the outline of a poem that kind of talks about that night or just your will to survive and to fight for the future.